Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to show you how to play The Crew Mission Deep Sea. It's ages 10 and up, 3 to 5 players, and it takes 20 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to complete a series of missions in the logbook. Uh, they all have different parameters depending on the number, um, on the side of the mission, as well as different challenges regarding um, communication. Um, and um, different things you can do and sometimes time limits. Uh, to begin, for your very first mission, you deal out all of the cards to all of the players. If you're playing a three-player game, this means one player will get one additional card more than the other players, and that is okay. That's part of it. Everybody gets a communication token and a reminder card, and you set the distress signal off to the side, face down, unless you are using it. I'll explain that in a minute here. Uh, for the first mission, it is just a number one, and how you select your mission goals is depending on the number of players you are playing with, the difficulty of the missions are on these cards um, by based on the number on the side. So if it's just a one you need, you go along in a four player game until you get to where there is a one on the side where there are four little people off to the side. Uh, some of them it's the same, for some it varies depending on how many people you play with. So you take that, uh, place it face up in the center, you can put the rest off to the side for now. And for this, it's just, I will win two tricks in a row. Um, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to flip over everybody's hands here. You do not get to see other people's cards in actual gameplay. Uh, the cards. There are five different suits. There are four different regular suits. And then these submarine cards are special because they are trump. Uh, and I'll explain what that is if you are not familiar with trump cards. Um, but the most important thing to begin is whoever has the four submarine card is the captain for that mission. They get their little captain token. They get to place it besides them, beside them so everybody knows that that is them. And they are going to go first in deciding whether or not they want to take this mission card. If there are fewer mission cards than there are players, then you have the option of either selecting one of the cards or passing on it. Uh, but it, you can only, it's, it's a little tricky. So the, even the captain can pass. So if the captain says, nah, I don't want to take this one, they can pass. If this person wants to, they can pass. This person could even pass, but then this person would have to take it. Uh, because you can't just keep on going around until someone selects it. Usually someone picks it pretty early, and this is a great one for the captain to pick, so the captain will probably just select it, place it in front of them. I will win two tricks in a row. And regardless of whether you have a um, one of these cards, uh, the captain goes first, whoever has the four. They can choose to lead Trump as their first uh, for the first trick, uh, but it depends on what the mission is. Uh, we'll say they didn't, and they're going to go ahead and lead this nine that's pink. Um, they also have little symbols beside it, so if people are colorblind, they can still play. And in a trick-taking game, whatever uh, color card um, or suit that has been played out, everybody else has to follow suit. Uh, you do not have to play your highest card if they placed their five out. Uh, this person could choose to go under with the three. You don't have to play the eight. Uh, but if you have the same color, then you have to play it. So this is what the first trick would look like. Everybody would place one card out. And in this, the nine is the highest card. So they would take the trick a uh, rule of thumb for pretty much all trick-taking games, but especially this one, is you place them face down after you've collected them. And then before you start the next round, if you want, somebody can say, hey, I want to see what was on that and look at it and consult it. But you can only do that for the most recent trick. Now, because they took the trick, they get to go again. And so they're going to go ahead and just win this thing. They are playing the Four of Trump. That is the... Um, best card. Um, nobody, nobody can beat that card. 
If you do not have any of the suit that has been played, you can play whatever card you want out here. And a lot of times it's advantageous to be void in a suit, to not have any of it. So this person might play their three. This person has trump, so they would have to play one of their trump cards. They can play whichever one they want. It doesn't really matter between the two and the three. And then this person, it it doesn't matter for them. They could just pick whichever one they want. They don't have any trumps, so they play what they want. Four of trump wins. And um, then this round is over. As soon as you fulfilled the requirements of the mission, uh, if it's something where you don't have to play out the whole hand, you don't have to. I will win two tricks in a row. Uh, they won two tricks in a row. So round over, you can shuffle up the cards and deal out another hand. Uh, for these mission cards, there's a lot of different ones, and sometimes you aren't sure if it you have to win exactly two tricks in a row or if it's okay to take more. Uh, page 16 in the rule book got consulted a lot when we were first learning how to play just because sometimes you have little questions about the specifics of different types of cards and what they mean. Uh, so it is very handy for a quick reference and then for other aspects of the game uh they they have communication here but they also just have a quick overview on the very back of the rule book um that's very handy as you move on okay let's skip to a more complicated mission for mission 19 it's a number nine you need to place out with the mission cards and also the most difficult mission goes to the captain again nobody can see each other's cards but you flip, I'm flipping them over so you can see what people are working with. Uh, the captain for this mission is this player because they have the number four submarine card, which is Trump. So you put the captain token in front of them. And then you need to place out cards that total nine in front of you. Uh, in general, if you were doing this and then a um, another four came up, so you already have four, six, and another four would make it equal 10. You just skip past it and keep on going until you get to exactly equaling uh, nine with the cards that you have. And also, uh, they recommend that as you're playing, you take the cards, that you've, the mission cards you've already used, and place them face up off to the side in a separate stack. So as you're playing, you always have fresh new missions and you aren't repeating ones that you've already done. And then once you've gone through, you can shuffle them up and use them all again. Uh, so that's what we have done and it has certainly helped. So then you place the mission cards out here. Uh, the captain selects theirs first and you don't even need to have them look at them. They just need to take the number four. Um, and then the rest, everybody looks at. Um, for some of these, you would need to shuffle the hand if it's if it is impossible to win as it is because they already have a um, mission card and they say I will win the three submarine. Well, it's in that it's impossible for that to happen. The captain has that card. So what you're supposed to do in that case is you shuffle up everyone's cards you don't change the mission cards and you shuffle up everyone's cards and deal it out again so that it's actually possible to do you don't change the mission cards you would change this sometimes there are things where you can't complete um the mission cards they contradict each other then you just switch one out and put a new one in that happens infrequently and then also the last bit about the mission cards is if uh you lose a mission if they played this out and even with if, um well we're gonna just do a little um switch um even with doing this and so this player would be able to take this card um uh if they don't win then you can choose to still use the same mission cards for the when you shuffle it out and try to deal out the mission again and play or you can switch it up and do new mission cards whichever you'd like to do it's very flexible so you go around and each player is picking I will take more tricks than captain and I will take no pink sure um now at this point communication becomes very important um, if 
you wish to use your distress signal, which happens, um, it's, it's never required, but can be very helpful as the missions get um, more complicated and difficult. Um, if you want to use the distress signal, no communication must have taken place. No one has shown any cards yet. And if somebody says, I think we should flip the distress signal, they do that after the tasks have been allotted. And then at that point, people can choose to pass one card and you can choose to pass either to the left or to the right. You can discuss that without saying any particulars about what is in your hand. Uh, but you are not allowed to pass Trump. You are not allowed to pass these submarine cards. Uh, so that wouldn't have helped in this situation. You would have, you would have had to redeal because it would have been impossible. Um, if you flip the distress signal, then your total mission score is increased by one in the logbook. But then if it takes you a few times to pass, to, to pass a mission, uh, you can you can still pass a card at the beginning of each round without having to add an additional. So if you just flip this and then it takes you three tries to pass a mission, but you're passing cards at the beginning of each round um, because you activated the distress signal, your total mission score is just four. It's whatever, however many times it took you to pass, um, plus one for this. Now your communication tokens. Uh, they can only, they cannot be used on trump cards. They can be used for any of the other suits. And they can only be used on a card that's um, your highest, lowest, or only. So this player could not choose to communicate the eight, the yellow eight. There's, it's not the highest, it's not the lowest, it's not the only. They can choose to communicate the two, and they would put it in front of them, take this reminder card and put it in their hand because you think you won't forget about the card you've placed down, but you do. So you put this in for your hand and then you'd put this down at the bottom if it's the lowest. If you're communicating your highest, you place it up here. And it can be advantageous to wait and not do it right at the beginning because if you've played around, if uh, this player gets to go first, if they played their five and this player played their nine and this player did their one, this player played their two, uh, this player would take that trick. And now if they wanted to, they could communicate that this is their only pink. So depending on, it, it can change what's in your hand. And so then you're able to communicate differently. And then if they've played this card out later on, and they no longer need this reminder card, you turn this face down because you've already used your communication for this round. There are a few other aspects of communication that they play around with. Sometimes they have a communication token with a question mark by it, which means you can place a card out, but you can't place if it's high or low or the only, you just place a card of significance out and, uh, that's, that's all you can do to communicate. Sometimes they remove two of the communication tokens and you just leave a couple in the middle of the table and call that good. And then there, sometimes there's free discussion of communication whenever the squid token is placed on the card. And the game is officially over when you get to level 32, but there's options for extended play in the epilogue if you so dare. So that's how to play the crew mission deep sea. If you like card games and trick taking games, then you will love this game. It is truly exceptional and uh, sure to be a hit. So check it out. Thanks and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.